So welcome everyone to our monthly concierge land uh, user group uh, where we hold an open forum, uh, talk about what's new in the world of uh, land and support and uh, answer your questions. So we'll speak uh, primarily through voice, but we also will respond to um, uh, text-based chat. So if you don't have a working mic or you just don't want to uh, open up the voice, you can go ahead and put in a question or a comment in uh, text, and we'll be happy to respond. So to kick off things, uh, we have a few topics we want to talk about, and the first one is a pretty big one that we've been waiting uh, a little bit, and it is finally here, and that is multi-factor uh, authentic uh, excuse me, <laughs> authentication. It's a big word. Um, we just released it, and it's a added benefit for securing uh, your Linden account. I'll go ahead and actually type it here. So as yesterday, we released this for all residents. This is going to give you an extra layer of security for all your Second Life accounts. It's currently covering accounts.secondlife.com, but uh, eventually it will be rolled out to other parts of the website and the viewer in future releases. So to use it, first you're going to go to this link here. And it's a simple, straightforward process. Uh, you can read all the information provided. Um, then you will click on the Get Started and it's going to walk you through the steps on how to uh, uh, authenticate your account. It's going to use your phone, and it's also going to send you uh, two sets of tokens, uh, first set, um, two separate numbers. You input that, wait for the second set of tokens to show up, you input that, and uh, you're good to go. Um, but you can find more about this here in our knowledge base, which we have recently. for the authentication. So I know, I know we've been waiting for this a long time. It is finally here. We are excited uh, for this added layer of security. And if you have any questions on it, um, you know, we are here to definitely answer. Wendy, did you want to talk about the snapshot tool? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Yeah, uh, we do have uh, something that's in beta right now. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's a uh, 360 snapshot tool. Um, that'll allow you to uh, take a spherical image uh, 360 photo inside Second Life. Um, you'll be able to navigate that outside of uh, Second Life itself. It's a great way to kind of show off your virtual space to friends, uh, both inside and outside of Second Life. They can look at that image and, you know, maybe come and visit. Um, to see what I'm talking about, if you're not familiar with uh, what a spherical image is, a 360 image, uh, you can check out uh, uh, this Flickr uh, feed uh, of Alexa Linden's uh, spherical images. Um, take a look at those. Um, you'll be able to click on those and navigate around the images and you'll look up, down, left, right, so forth. Um, it's really a cool feature. I, it's kind of fun. Um, it is in, in beta, so if you want to test that, 
um, you'll want to download the beta viewer at this URL. Otherwise, it'll run just like your regular Second Life, but it'll give you a, se a second snapshot option. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It really is. And yeah, we'd love to have any feedback on it, you know, if it works well for you or not. Um, they're still working out some of the, you know, speed, getting everything to resonate image and so forth. So feedback is great for that. Uh, eventually, uh, key, they'll, uh, they'll put that into the main. It's not quite ready for that yet. I think there's a couple of other viewers there looking at before that. I'll touch on the fantasy homes next. Um, the fantasy linden homes are continuing to be a very popular theme along with the other linden home offerings that we still have and continue to release. Uh, for fantasy homes, we are still releasing these and other homes regularly, um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, generally between the morning and afternoon. So if you haven't gotten one, definitely take a look uh, at our selection page uh, if you are a premium or a concierge resident. And take a look at the different Bellas area themes. Um, one thing to note, if there's always been a theme that you had trouble getting that was always unavailable, um, whenever we release new themes, there's always a rush to get the, uh, the newest theme first. So residents will actually abandon their current ones and then go for the new ones. And that opens up uh, some of the older themes. So uh, in case you're looking for a houseboat or a Victorian house or a camper, um, even with the newer release ones, this would be an excellent opportunity to um, jump into the uh, older themes that um, might not have been available due to um, you know, limitations. So uh, definitely check it out. We're releasing new homes uh, at least three times a week still, and um, you know, every theme uh, so far has just become getting better and better, and uh, the area is more intricate. So uh, very happy to see. Uh, the homes continuing to be released at the current cadence, along with uh, what I think is more, uh, more just beautification, just more everything. <laughs> what do you guys think? Anyone here have the fantasy home yet? I've been reluctant to get rid of my Victorian one. Yeah, here, yeah, I've had a, a couple of different ones. I haven't gotten a fantasy one to play with yet. I do love, and I've talked about it before here, but I really do love the the seasonal and daily changes that all of them go through. Right. Um, you know, they get more glow at night and stuff like that. It's really kind of cool. And actually, with it uh, being the autumnal equinox, I imagine the first seasonal change should be starting soon. Well, thank you, Succeeding. I'll go ahead and pass that along to uh, the engineers who have been working tirelessly to release these new features. Um, it's a collective effort across numerous departments, and um, you know, we're happy to see all these new uh, upgrades and feature improvements come out, and um, happy to share them here as well. Karen, yes. Um, you can change your fantasy home. So if you are a uh, qualifying resident, you premium concierge, um, if you have a current linden home, you can abandon that one. Just be sure to pick up your belongings. You don't want to lose anything. And then you will revisit the selection page, uh, the link I posted above in the voice chat, and look for Billis Area and the Fantasy. If it's not available, that means there might not be any uh, slots currently open, but I would say keep checking back regularly as we're releasing more homes. And I will tell you that as of this sure moment, thing. I'm seeing... Um, Fantasy homes, uh, chalet homes, and camper trailer homes uh, currently available in the queue. So if you want a fantasy, 
Um, we've actually had a lot of them. They've been available, but uh, you'll be able to get one right away. You have yep. to um, abandon, right. as Vix had mentioned. Go ahead. Now you just have to abandon, and then you'll be able to pick up a different home. Because you can only have one home at a time. And for anyone that needs the steps on abandoning the home, you can visit this part of the knowledge base here. It's going to give you the step-by-step. -step. Basically, there's uh, two steps to follow in World. And it's pretty instant. So as soon as that home is abandoned, uh, it's going to free up a slot. You can go right back to the selection page and pick up a new one. You're welcome. And of course, uh, just as a side note on the uh, the Linden Homes too, is that um, while we'll be seeing uh, new designs coming out, obviously there's nothing that we can discuss yet, but I'm sure that uh, there will be something new on the horizon pretty soon. Um, and there's still going to be a couple of couple of new designs coming up down the line as well. Um, also, I guess while I'm on the mic, I should mention um, that, uh, and I've talked about this a little bit, but we are finally able to sync accounts and inventories to the beta grid again. Uh, I know that, that was an issue, an issue post uplift. We're all really excited about that because, you know, it's, it's, it's no fun when, you know, everyone wants to get there and we can't, can't get them there. So, so that's available now for both, um, you know, syncing accounts, syncing inventories to the beta grid. So you're able to log over there. Um, if you do need to be copied over to the beta grid, um, simply send us a support case, you know, uh, a login issue, whatever, and um, we'll be happy to do it. Um, yeah, there are still, you know, I'll be remiss to say if I didn't say that, you know, both two things, the process does take a little bit longer to complete nowadays. Um, and there are still some login issues that are cropping up with it, cases where, uh, the password sync didn't quite work or where inventory is showing up outdated. Um, so there are still some things that are being worked on. They are being actively looked at. Um, I've been yelling and screaming at people the last couple of weeks about it. So, but, Why are you um, screaming at our residents, Wendy? Jeez. No, not our residents. No, no. <laughs> but uh, I've, I always find plenty of people to yell at. No. Um, but... Uh, but if you have a problem, you know, even after a copy, let us know. Uh, there's a few things we can try. Um, so we'll get you in there. That's our goal. Any other questions on that? Maybe I'll touch on the workaround a little bit just so uh, everyone can Please, there. please. Um, if you're still unable to get into uh, the beta grid once we've done the initial copy over, um, and if it, this is through a ticket, we would definitely get you in ticket because we can send all this information over. Um, but process is to have you reset your password securely, and I'll go ahead and link the password reset page here. Let us know that you've completed that step, and we'll ask the engineers to recopy you over, and this should uh, get you in there. Sure, Adam, go for it.
Yes, every account is uh, welcome to access the beta grid. Uh, it is not dependent on uh, service level. Oh, and I'll add one more thing on ID now that I think about it. Another issue, um, which has been coming up a couple of times, but just in case, uh, if it's your first time getting logged into a DD and you want to upload Mesh and you find that you're having problems doing that, let us know on that too because we might need to uh, uh, adjust your uh, upload status on that. It's been a couple of cases, but not very, not very common. Here's our overall wiki page on the uh, beta grid as well for anyone who wants to give it a read. Any other questions so far on the topics we've covered? I was sure you guys would have some multi-factor authentication questions. That's that was pretty big news. Excellent, welcome news for us. Finally. Yeah. Oh, good question. I'm not sure. Um, if you've been, I think you've been in our previous uh, meetings, Lucia. So whenever there's an idea, uh, we have a, uh, a feature system that you can submit the ideas to, just in case it's not on their roadmap. Let me go ahead and get you that link here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I kind of just like say, just in case you know, I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> I don't like to assume nobody's here every meeting, but you are. <laughs> nice. How are their meetings going? The web team. Okay. Yeah, I know there's a number of, of options coming up on it. Um, for one thing, I know that, like, right now it's only for – a portion of the website. Um, they are going to. They are looking at expanding it out, eventually to marketplace, to viewer login, other locations, and yeah, they are looking at, at other ways to deliver it as well. You know, this is this is step one. Yeah, that's coming too. Yeah, a lot of people don't necessarily know that with the JIRA there is both uh, the ability to do bugs, indeed, and um, to do uh, new features uh, there, which I highly recommend because it does go direct to our dev team. And uh, they do review those um, nearly daily. Um, they'll be meeting and working on those. That could be Alienware Toothless. I'm all about it. <laughs> I don't think we've done an official. I know we've done work no. in the past with a couple things, but I, nothing I think really official. Important.
Yeah, nothing that says the official hardware of. Because I remember way, way back, we, uh, you know, we're doing stuff with uh, 3D connection with the old Space Navigators way back. But again, it wasn't like an official branded product. It was just us working with them to make sure it works for us. What was the Jira number that you had, JP? Oh, I see you, Adam. <laughs> well, I know how to swim, so nah. Hey, JP, uh, just make sure it was in the right place. I do see that um, your JIRA regarding the uh, Oops Griefer Crasher um, was reviewed. In fact, um, if you're able to view it, um, Soft actually replied in May uh, regarding the JIRA. So it uh, looks like it did get reviewed, and um, I don't think it's something that, based on his reply, that they will be able to... Okay. Yeah, so you saw the reply. Okay. Yeah, while we'll do what we can here to help facilitate the submissions of JIRAs, uh, they do get reviewed by separate teams. Sure thing. Hey, Lucia. I can give you a quick note on that. Um, the governance team is exploring better ways of sharing information um, regarding abuse supports, but right now uh, we have nothing more um, regarding that. So they are looking into it. Oh, that's good to hear, Lucy. Hey, Kai. Uh, that was actually one of our uh, later topics to talk about. 
It was a yes. It was a uh, update on Soma FM, and uh, we have recognized it. it does affect um, residents' ability to uh, stream URLs in world. Um, it looks like it was an an update that um, you know they made. So what we have heard is that there might be possible workaround regarding placing media URLs in a prim. So it's basically a shared on-prem or media on-prem. Um, that may still allow the, uh, the stream to come in. So definitely worth exploring. Yeah, shame that I rather it seems to some of the streams in the world. Go for it, Adam. I feel like I'm just setting myself up here. Yeah, we may have a random answer, Tom. <laughs> we might say, you know, well, you cut the crusts off. Good question. I'm not aware of one um, open to the res. Let me think. A replica. Yeah, I don't. I don't know of one that's out there. I know that. Oh, oh a number. There was a, a really lovely uh, um, virtual one. That uh, who was it? I want to say uh, Loki Elliot did for one of the birthdays that had. Uh, it's the facade of the structure, uh, but um, I've not seen anything that's got the interior. And no, I haven't yet. The uh, I haven't found out why that one's not open yet, or what the plans are there. I'll make a note. At least we can get you an answer, uh, Lucia, by the next. I don't know, Adam. I've seen many of the desks, so there could be some stiff competition there. I know mine's messy. I'm just saying. <laughs> Too busy working. It all depends on how you define mess, because you can have a very organized mess as long as you know where everything is. Oh, it's not organized. This wire desk is Definitely not organized. It's more of the catch-all. <laughs> That's why I like these L-shaped desks. 
one side you have your keyboard, your mirrors, everything's clean. The other side, who knows? Does anyone's guess what's over there? Might be last week's dinner still buried in there somewhere. Exactly succeeding. See, I'm looking for inspiration. You never know what's going to hit you. Michael, um, we have no idea. Yeah, it was really, it was an update on their end that we were made aware of. We can move along to the next topic, and that is our latest viewer release. Some of you noticed it was uh, released yesterday. It's still a maintenance viewer. And I'll put the link for it here directly. So we have restored the prior talk to toggle behavior. While push to talk is still on the roadmap, uh, we want to make it very easy for residents to select their preferred speak button behavior. And uh, along with the toggle to talk, um, plenty of other fixes were released as well. So it's definitely uh, worth a look. Looks like there was updates to ALM, um, number of EEP fixes. So um, definitely have a go. And anyone who's looking for um, our project viewers or maintenance viewers, uh, when you visit the download page and you click uh, release notes. Um, right under the heading on the left, recent simulator releases, you will see links to other viewers um, still in testing that you can uh, download and give it a whirl as well. And let me send the link to our download page. Take care, Bradley. And Bertsonson. Yes, it is. Right. So it's still labeled the uh, maintenance viewer. It's not the default one yet. Hopefully soon. That is correct, Kai. So if you're already on a maintenance viewer, uh, just as I am, you will see the, um, the update come right in. I guess we can move on to the Halloween news, right, Randy? Sure, why not? So I'll talk a little bit about it because I know that uh, coming up pretty soon, um, the applications closed on it uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, the Halloween Shop and Hop will be coming up. Uh, that'll run October 1st through the 31st. Uh, the Shop and Hop's been pretty popular. 
Um, the, the, as people have gotten used to them, there's gifts, there's going to be discounted items, a whole bunch of other new releases and fun things like that. Uh, watch our blog. Uh, you'll find the details there when it opens and uh, the locations and all of that. I'm sure we'll have a few other things coming up for Halloween. We know it's, for a lot of us, including myself, a really fun holiday. Yeah, it's my Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. <laughs> So for this year, I um, wanted to add a little uh, festivity to our own meeting. And October 27th, which is our meeting immediately following this one, immediately as like in a month, um, we will have a little uh, Halloween festivities of our own, some decorations here, some uh, trick-or-treating, maybe some spike juice, who knows? <laughs> but uh, same bat time, same bat channel, it is the... Uh, fourth Wednesday of the month. Come by, have a little fun with us, and um, hear what's new. Oh, we like to keep it light here. I think a couple of meetings ago we brought the uh, the whole concierge team here, and they were so nervous. <laughs> We put them on stage. <laughs> we'll have to bring some of the new folks in. We do have a couple of new new names that you might see in chat soon. That'd be a great idea. Be sure to bring your group questions. Because nothing scares the new Linden. It's forty more than answering group questions. <laughs> Heck, I'll even get the vets. I feel I should also add um, that uh, Halloween, of course, isn't the only thing October is known for. And uh, Zenoscope is actually hosting an Oktoberfest pop-up on their region, uh, which we've had some involvement with them on that, helping them get that set up. So feel free to uh, pop over there when you're at your convenience. Um, grab a stein, pack your lederhosen, you know, uh, go check it <laughs> I out. I that word. Yep. <laughs> I love Lederhosen as a word. Um, I just can't say it without, without a straight face. <laughs> um, but that Earl will get you information on where that is and all the times and all that. So it's fun. I'm always excited to see what um, uh, residents create for Halloween. Every year, it's always something new. Uh, every year, it's, they're always out doing the previous year. So that's the time I really go out and I, you know, ride all the rides and I see what they made. It's just a fun time all around. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of hunts and things. I've already started to see different groups start talking about trick-or-treat events that they're putting on and things like that. So, I wonder if it was last fun. year or the year before, a lot of Linda's got together and we did a, kind of like a dance crawl. We went to the different venues and, and hung out and partied a little bit in the afternoon. So it's always a good time. Agreed. Any questions so far? Anything we've covered?
Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes or so left, you know. Any other topics, questions, comments, dance moves, something? It is still very much actively being worked on. Um, in fact, even as we speak, they're doing some testing on it. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing it out soon. I know that I got pulled back a little bit for uh, Apple wanting some things changed on, on the viewer, but uh, uh, that seems to be mostly worked out. They should have something pretty soon on it, and I know that the Android development's coming along after that as well. Near anything else, y'all? Recipes or, you know, something? Don't no it's yet. yet, yeah. Yeah. You were the gunning for Premium Plus. We can count on you for the first sign-up, right, Adam? We're going to personally invite you to Premium Plus. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it is It is definitely on hold um, for now. Um, we'll see, you know. I know that uh, they initially put it on hold because of um, COVID and everything coming up with that and well we're still kind of there so um you know that's where that is uh the difference between premium and concierge accounts um a premium account is well someone who pays the, pre the premium account concierge accounts are estate owners or large mainland owners um which by and large are premium but not necessarily premium in the case of estates and that's largely the difference as far as, I mean, those of us who are in concierge, we assist both um, for um, a concierge and a premium account. We provide the same level of service. Right. I'll add on that uh, concierge uh, accounts or concierge residents do have a little bit more avenues uh, for reaching support than premium. Um, but yeah, there are definitely a lot of similarities, but uh, concierge, you know, you're paying land, you can be mainland or private land, but uh, it's a higher tier service, but also shares many of what premium has. Will you go enjoy this, yeah? See you next month. Have lunch for me too.
Anything else, y'all? Hey, Toothless, to answer your question, um, can you elaborate a little bit on new regions? Are these from the land store or? We've always been able to deliver regions pretty quickly. Although new regions, um, typically the access will be limited until the uh, map sinks. Adam, yeah, we are still uh, moon labbing it for the most part. Um, haven't heard any word on the offices, but you know that information um, becomes available to us and we're able to share. We'll definitely let you know. Yeah, as far as I know, there's nothing, nothing set in stone at this point. I mean, things are still a bit up in the air on that. Um, as far as our our offices are concerned, um, you know, we're all working remotely by and large. Um, on our own little moon labs so you know that will probably eventually change uh, but there's no plans yet and yes toothless they actually um because we have the the land store back open after uplift uh they actually will spin up uh, pretty quickly um, so fast so that uh, in many cases you'll have to log directly into the region um, in order to reach it you'll be able to teleport for a little bit for a few hours um, but log into it create a landmark uh, you'll be able to use that you'll be able to teleport people over and it will it'll clear up after that but um, but yeah they spin up very very fast nowadays People usually have to end up with me teleporting them over to their regions or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always happy to do that. I'm always a fan of seeing new land raised from the seas, as it were. That's really kind of cool there, Key. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Michael, did you mean like spanning your viewer across multiple monitors? Oh, it could actually do that. So you can just um, click and expand uh, your viewer window onto your second monitor. And the scenery will change. It's actually pretty seamless. Depending upon the settings you have with the other monitor, it might look a little, uh, 
um, kind of like hacked off. But if you have the same monitor with the same settings, um, the window size should be uh, perfect. Oh yeah, then you should have no issues at all just um, clicking and expanding. You can make the window as large as you need it to be, and um, the scene will just expand as you uh, expand it yourself. I agree, although as I get older, I'm kind of just tending to use one monitor nowadays. I used to be like, I can't work with anything less than two monitors. And I'm finding that to be the case. <laughs> yeah, I actually have several monitors here, but they're all on different computers, so... <laughs> doesn't quite work out or quite right. left here. Anyone had any questions anyone want to bring up? Now's the time. And if you haven't yet, be sure to grab a Linden Bear in the front. Thank you, Wendy, for putting that one together. It's really nice. Oh, my pleasure. It was a lot of fun to do. I don't know. Now how I'm thinking many about a Halloween know. bear. <laughs> yes. I don't know how many people know. I I teach a lot of the bear the the bear classes internally for Linden, so it was fun to actually which I have attended. Put one together. Yes. It's fun to put another one together for this. And uh, I believe that uh, some of the other teams are looking at doing a similar bear, so maybe there will be another one down there for land soon. Oh, I thought you meant I was the best. I haven't figured out if I can do a clash yet. I don't know what I'd do. Maybe Adam and I can sync up on something. You too, succeeding. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you next month. I'll be dressed in a little costume. Everyone else wants to uh, put on a little simple costume. You're more than welcome. Or even a not so simple. 
No, you're not your so choice. <laughs> you can never be so crazy complicated that none of us see you. <laughs> yes, wear our jelly doll costume there. Take care, Key. Good to see you. You're welcome, Dave. Happy to share it. More than happy to be here with y'all. Take care, all. We'll see you uh, October 27th. October 27th. Be there. Next meeting. Thank you guys for coming in. Take see care, all. Bye-bye. Ah, very thoughtful succeeding. <laughs> you have a good one. <laughs>